the more complete version of that is similar to the login page where I can create a JSP file which is just going to be the header section it's not the whole page or anything so just however big you want your header you would create it to fit that again there's an example file available within the development folder you would create that and again save it into your root directory so you would come into the admin configuration menu and go across to the integration option just as the screenshot suggests you would change the page header to be instead of standard you'd go custom which would make this next option appear and then that's where you just define the location of where the custom header file is so if it's in your root directory you don't need to give the full explanation of where it is you simply would just do your slash and then the name of the file so I have a few examples to show you of this one just because it can get quite creative so first up I've got this version here so I've got a custom header across the top being those big blue chunky bits and also a custom footer across the bottom so again how does that change that look and feel of Yellowfin now I've got a few more modern versions here so this is actually a ver an example of someone who's integrated Yellowfin with another product so it's a CRM and the header contains links back to the CRM as well as the company logo and that look and feel similar to this one here again I've got you know additional links coming through that are allowing me to be able to navigate to other modules or other products so it can really um, change the way that Yellowfin looks and feels now I wanted to go into the custom images and CSS so what this is really about is the ability to get down to the nitty gritties of Yellowfin and completely change everything from little icons to be your own icons um, and this can get sometimes this needs to happen for different reasons like sometimes you may actually use a different image to represent exporting so you want Yellowfin to use your export icon which is fine or the other reason is that you might want to adjust the colors so in Yellowfin you'll notice and even if I toggle out to back to a dashboard for you to show you a few examples because our Yellowfin colors are like this blue you'll notice we'll have our buttons as we hover over they go gray but then they highlight to our Yellowfin blue so if you actually if your corporate color was red or purple you might want to change it so that it hovers to be blue instead so that's just a simple example of how you'd want to have to go through and find all the locations of where it goes blue to therefore put in your own image of your color can be a little bit tedious but I think it's really fun so the way that we do this the way we work out what we need to change well, I guess there's no easy way to work out what we need to change but once I've identified that I need to change that button that maximize button when I hover over it it needs to be a different color so if I decide you know I, I'm gonna change that button what I'm gonna do is right click over that and go to my inspect depending on your browser it might be a different name but basically your browser has these developer tools that allow you to kind of unpack everything that's happening so I like to come through they're not always super easy to find um, but what I'm looking for here is something to do with the buttons and so I reckon it's probably this guy as I hover over him notice how that display area is changing from not displaying anything to then hovering over and displaying those buttons so that's kind of the area I need to change the other thing you can do is that you can change or oh, you can go and look for the file so if you navigate to your Yellowfin program file so here's my program files I'm going to go to my app server web apps and then into my root directory all of the images within Yellowfin live in this images folder there are lots so be warned so you would scroll through all of these to find the one that we're looking for so if you don't get any hints from there I reckon it's probably called dash add dash option so that's the little drop down arrow let's just use our add button as an example or our drop down arrow so notice that there's a few different versions of the images so especially these button things so there's a version of the button without being opened 
then there's a version of hovering over it so how my icon before went from grey to blue when I hovered and then when I open it it stays blue so you just sort of find the images you need you can get you can pretty much grab that exact image throw it into Photoshop Photoshop what you need to make sure you save it as the exact same name but the new one, we don't want to put it back in the images folder. Remember, we want to make sure it goes into the custom images folder. So you would drop it into here. And so that then allows you to be able to never lose it when you go to do a product upgrade because Yellowfin won't touch the custom images directory. Now, the same thing happens with CSS. Again, all of Yellowfin CSS lives in this folder. And you can easily find something. Um, quickly, let's find an example. So let's say sales performance. Had that's gone blue, I'm going to change that to go a different color. So first I'm going to inspect it to find the right area. And then I'm going to scroll across to the CSS here. Now you can use, like I'm using Chrome, and so this actually allows you to test it. It doesn't save it but I can choose a color. So there we go. I can see that that color has changed it to yellow. So that is the right style that I need. So you want to look at what is the name of that style sheet and then what is the name of that particular div or style. So I'm just going to copy that one into my browser and we'll open this up again. So let's go dashboard CSS. Okay, excellent. So I have located that particular section. What you should do is copy the whole bit of code that is relevant to that style. Just go copy, then using your text wrangler or whatever option you want, you go create a new file. So it's just going to open a new tab for me. I'm going to paste that in because I'm going to create a brand new custom CSS file. I'm going to change the color. You don't have to change everything, you can just change bits of it, but I do recommend copying the whole bit because this is what's going to override the original file. Now what I do here is I save this file into my custom directory and I'm just going to call it custom file for example. You only need one custom file um, or one custom CSS spreadsheet and you would pretty much whenever you find something else that you want to change you would come in and change it there so for example what about this blue line oh, actually the blue lines part of the header so you wouldn't need to style that what about what about what about I'm just trying to think of something else we might want to style Okay, so let's try this one, copy that, let's search for that, he'll actually be in my, in a different CSS file, so even though it's going to come from a different CSS file, um, it doesn't mean that you can't put it into the same custom file. Okay, so I would copy that bit, copy it over to my custom file just underneath it, and again, you know, I'll just change the background color, Fab 400, it's always my favorite color because it's bright yellow, it's easy to spot, and I'm going to save that. Now to watch those changes come through, I should just point out, all you really need to do is refresh your browser, so just go up to the top of your browser and press refresh. You'll see my campaign analysis up here has gone yellow and so has that section setting. I probably haven't inspected that properly so when it's not being hovered over it's yellow but there's a different setting for if I'm hovering over it because that's a little section that I can open and close. But you can see the point of how we can find those different parts of CSS and add them in. Now that custom CSS file can get a little bit messy so I totally recommend adding in lots of comments 
about what things are. So I can just sort of, you don't have to do all those asterisks. I just like to do it because they get my attention and I know what they are then. And that's going to make it a lot easier for you to maintain and work everything out. Okay, let's drop back across. So what you can actually end up with is a directory full of custom images and full of a whole new file for you, which will completely change that look and feel. Okay, so the last thing I just want to go on to is the client organization styling. This may not apply to everyone, it only applies to people who are using Yellowfin in a multi-tenancy capacity, um, as what we call client organizations. So the reason I'm just bringing this up is to purely sort of let you know what can and can't be restyled. Um, so, and actually the answer is that majority of things can be restyled. So to really paint the picture for everyone out there, um, if you were creating a multi-tenant environment and each of your tenants was a different office or perhaps a totally different customer, you may want each of those tenants to have different colors and logos and things. So you can actually do that. Within each client org, if you log into you know, client org A, you can open the content settings and the configuration options. And they'll all be sort of isolated, or majority of those options will be completely isolated to that particular client org. There are some settings that are globally set from the default org and therefore get pushed through, but the rest of them can be changed. And that particularly goes to content settings. You can change all the colors of your reports and charts within each org. You can also have different headers and footers for each of the different orgs. I, you cannot have a different login page though because obviously until someone logs in we don't know what org they belong to so they do have to have the same login page um, and you can also create custom images and CSS for each of those organizations where you would actually create within the custom images folder you'd create a subfolder for the client and then add all the images in there and there's just a few things you change in the back end to actually get them to inherit all the way through. So don't feel like you have to keep the same settings for all your different client orgs. However, I can imagine it would be a really big job to manage different content settings and colors and logos for all of the different clients. So that decision's up to you, but if you want to do it, you definitely can. That actually now concludes this lesson about being able to customize Yellowfin. So hopefully you've learned the value of being able to incorporate your own look and feel and as well as you should have received a pretty good understanding of the different options available with what you can restyle. For any additional options or any additional information, please check the wiki. There are lots of information about restyling Yellowfin. It's within the integration section of the wiki.